The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists. On the south today, strong winds and heavy snowfall in central Otago bring some icy challenges for motorists. An energetic dance class in Balclutha is bringing the community together, moving their bodies to a classic beat. And a young trampolinist leaping high on the national stage and looking to continue Southland's success. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Hannah Wilkins. It's been a ferocious start to August. Winds gusting well over 100 kilometres an hour lifted a large part of the hangar roof at Tyree Aerodrome and forced a plane from Auckland to turn around. The gale force winds also brought down power lines in Signal Hill and cut power in several other suburbs. Meanwhile, heavy snow kept the Milford Road completely closed, with access to the Crown Range also closed for parts of the day. Motorists were struggling to get a grip with the conditions today, as central Otago was greeted with heavy snow for the first day of August. Access roads to the Crown Range, which links Queenstown and Wanaka, was closed for a few hours around lunchtime on Tuesday. It was later reopened, but only for those who could fit snow chains to their vehicles. That was a challenge for some tourists, attempting to cross the pass in the snowy conditions. Putting chains on their vehicles, a new experience for these visitors. We are from China and we're the first time here and it's the first time I know there's a thing like snow chain. But a daring few did manage to make their way up the mountain as the snowfall got heavier to check out the winter spectacle. Oh yeah, I saw the forecast and then we got really excited. Snow is expected to continue to fall around 200 metres in central Otago region through until early morning Wednesday along with strong winds. The Met Service is advising motorists travelling along Alpine roads to be on alert for active road snow warnings and to keep up to date with the latest forecasts in the changeable conditions. In central Otago, the South Today. It was a fashionable few days over the weekend in Gore as the district's iconic fashion show hit the runway. The Hokanui Fashion Design Awards left audiences in awe as some of the country's top budding designers' work strutted down the catwalk. TV presenter Hilary Barry swapping out the studio for the catwalk as she tries her hand at modelling. The rural town of Gore was glammed up over the weekend as this year's Hokanui Fashion Design Awards put the spotlight on the district. The fashion show was held over two days at the Gore Town and Country Stadium with entries coming from across the country. Southland farmer Debbie Smith won the People's Choice Award as well as the avant-garde open section with her earth-inspired garment that has two million stitches. I called the garment Papa Tuanuku Earth Mother and it was my nod to the history of New Zealand. So it actually tells a story about how, it was, how New Zealand came about. So I hope I did that proud. This was the 35th year of the Hokanui Awards, proving popular with audiences from around the region as models showed off the garments in front of a capacity crowd. Otago Polytech student Molly Marsh claimed top honours with her tennis-themed garments, which were created as an ode to her childhood. The creativity that I get to explore is so wide and I think being able to share that with other people makes it really special. Eleven categories were showcased at the fashion show, with designers ranging from high school students through to rural farmers. Judge and Huffer brand founder Steve Dunstan says he was blown away by the talent on display and believes the future of New Zealand fashion is in good hands. In Gore, the South Today. Some South Otago locals have been counting 5, 6, 7, 8 as they try their hands at a classic dance genre. An English country dance craze swept some Balclutha residents off their feet with local classes bringing the community together. Putting their best foot forward and taking a step back in time. These Balclutha residents have been twirling away the centuries as they come together to learn English country dance. Instructor Jean Anderson has been running the sessions and says the historic dancing brings communities together to have fun. 
English country dancing, well this is particularly Regency dancing which is from the 18, early 1800s and it's fairly easy to pick up. It's the kind of dances people did in country halls. It's the kind of from the Pride and Prejudice kind of era. The weekly sessions are being held at Belclutha's Pipe Band Hall with funding coming from the Clutha District Council and creative communities. It's great fun. Um, it's a good way to get people out and it's very social. Yeah, get people out after the doom and gloom of the last three years. Anderson currently has a class of around 20 keen dancers and hopes to continue to expand that as its local popularity grows. In Balclutha, the South Today. An historic theatre in Gore is getting a brand new addition to the building following some recent strengthening work. Upgrades to the SBS St James Theatre were disrupted due to COVID-19 restrictions, but the regional project is finally making some progress. It may not look like much now, but these project developers are finalising plans on a new lift in Gore St James Theatre. Construction crew have been working hard on the theatres since April getting it sorted to meet the compliance requirements of the New Zealand Building Code. Shan Shelton director Phil Conroy says the upgrades have been progressing well, but they've had to address some accessibility problems. The major issue around that is creating um, lift access between the foyer, the main theatre, the small cinema, and at the same time heading through to the projection box at level three. Contractors have to carve out tons of concrete from the walls to reduce the weight and strengthen the structure for the new lift shaft. They are now preparing to start crucial underground work on the building, difficult work Conroy is confident his construction team can handle. There are skill sets in provincial New Zealand that are second to none. In fact, in some cases they're well and truly above what you see in the main centres. However, paying for the major project remains a critical issue. The Gore and District St James Theatre Trust is still seeking funding so this upgrade project can be completed. In Gore, the South today. It was just three years ago that Southland-born Dylan Schmidt became New Zealand's first Olympic medalist in gymnastics. Now, another young Southland trampolinist is carving out a name for himself after claiming four gold medals at last month's National Gymnastics Championships. Tumbling, flipping and sticking the landing, 14-year-old Jacob Anderson is jumping his way to new heights. The trampolining champion from Invercargill has an extra spring in his step after taking out four gold medals at the New Zealand Gymnastics Championships in Tauranga. He's been competing in the sport for five years now, taking on eight hours of training a week. But trampolining wasn't where he started. I started doing the artistic stuff, but I wasn't very good at that. And my coach suggested that I tried the um, trampolining side of things, and I was a lot better at that. He believes the secret to his success is simply performing tidier moves than his competitors, with his coaches feeling the athlete has a lot of potential. He did really, really well. I'm really proud of how he went. Honestly, some of the stuff he does I can't even do when I competed. Like, kind of scary, like, watching it all. But, like, he's done really well. He's trained really hard. And I'm really proud of how like, hard he's worked and got him as far as he has. The heights the young trampolinist has reached by the age of just 14 is already inspiring the next generation of Southland gymnasts. It's quite encouraging for the young ones to see it, yeah. So I'm um, seeing all the big skills and, you know, just the, the gold medals that are being brought in. It's really nice, yeah. Jacob says he'd like to compete internationally one day and his coaches are already eyeing up the possibility of bigger Australian competitions feeling that Jacob Anderson may well be a name to look out for in the future. In Invercargill, the South Today. If I Yakane still to come on the South Today. The Premier Club Rugby Finals in Dunedin become a true love story for one of the Magpies players. And an 18-year-old Southland ice skater pulls back the curtain on what two years of solid training can do. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour in Your Life, Tuesdays, 7.30. Here at 
at Age Concern Otago, we offer a range of services to support Otago seniors to age well with dignity and independence. We provide social work support, visiting service, health promotion and social activities. Check out what we have on offer at ageconcernotago.com. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. The sun may be lower in the sky, but that doesn't lower the risk from skin cancer. Melanoma doesn't care about the season and will continue growing regardless. Don't let shorter days shorten your days. Book a full body mole map now. Aero, used by Australia's top bowlers with their unique Z-Scoop grip that redefines the game. Machined with robotics for unparalleled accuracy, Aero, same line every time. Drive away your way with three incredible offers on the Honda CRV Adventure Ready Range. Choose from 2.9% finance with zero deposit, third, third, third finance, or lease a new CRV from just $136 per week. These offers are only available for a limited time, so be in quick. From Honda. Tēnākwe, welcome back. The Southern Rugby Club defeated tough opponents Dunedin over the weekend in the Premier Club Rugby Final, but one player has more than just one reason to celebrate. Now they kick it out. That's it. That's all over. The final match finished 30 points to 20 in favour of the Southern side and a tightly contested match on Saturday. That meant back-to-back -back titles for the Southern Rugby Club at their home ground. Players and supporters were in high spirits after the game, rallying together and singing songs to celebrate their victory and claiming the Spades Championship shield. But Southern prop Jay Tofayono saved the best celebration for last, getting down on one knee in front of the large crowd to propose to his partner, Mate Talatonu. Would you marry me? The club joined the newly engaged couple in celebrating their significant moment, showcasing their team bond off the pitch. The engagement capped off an already special day for Tofayono, who admits it was a moment he'd planned for for a long time. In Dunedin, the South today. Ice skating is a sport a lot of people find difficult, but one Southland teenager is making it look easy. 18-year-old Olivia Hughes has spent the last two years refining her passion, taking to the ice a long way from home. Carving up the ice down south after two years of skating overseas. Former Blue Mountain College student Olivia Hughes has spent the last two years in the United States, refining her figure skating skills. The 18-year-old finished her year 12 and 13 studies in Minnesota with a rigorous schedule balancing ice skating with academics. Waking up to go to the gym and then I would finish with that and I'd go to my classes for school and then at about lunchtime I would finish most of my classes and I'd get on the ice for about two hours. Minnesota's Shattuck St. Mary's High School boasts a special center of excellence for ice skating, which has helped Hughes develop her passion and gain more experience. My long-term goal is to keep skating in um, America again. Hughes enjoyed meeting people from different cultures over the two-year experience. She's now pursuing a Bachelor of Sports coaching at Canterbury University, but hopes to transfer to New York University at the end of the year on an ice skating scholarship. In Gore, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. 
gusty winds and heavy snow cut power and closed roads, including the Crown Range, forcing motorists to fit chains. Some Balclutha residents are twirling to classic 19th century music as part of an English country dance class. And Southlander Jacob Anderson is making a name for himself after claiming four gold medals at the National Gymnastics Champs. And now we'll look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. We welcome acting editor Barry Stewart. Hello, Barry. Welcome back. Hello. Thank you. It's been a while. Oh, it's wonderful um, to see you some again. Some of my colleagues are pretty keen to get in here. So. And they've been fantastic. I've stood aside. So, um, <laughs> what can you share with us this evening? Well, we, we have a look at the uh, former Fulbury Park race course. It's been lying idle for a couple of years now. Mm. And just excuse me a moment while I uh, You're out of practice, attend, to, attend to my <laughs> phone. News is always on the go. Um, sorry about that. Fulbury Park. Fulbury Park. Uh, we have a look at where it's going mm -hmm. and we have discovered that it's being bogged down with legal uh, issues. So, um, sorry, that was very rude. Yes, I, should, right. I won't do that again, I promise. Okay. So, that's, uh, so Fulbury Park is still bogged down with legal proceedings, so uh, we don't know its fate yet. I mean, right. it's for sale, mm. uh, and the sale was proceeding, and, and that's where it's at. Okay. We also look at the Football World Cup um, and what it means, uh, what it has it meant for the city, mm. um, the impacts of it, and of course, a lot of infrastructure stays behind and yeah. uh, an upgrade of various things, but just the... Uh, the uh, the vibe around the city and what it means to for young people, which has been great. Yeah, yeah. it's fantastic. So we have a look at that. Uh, mm. Kayla Hodge uh, has a look at that, and of course ahead of tonight's game between Netherlands and Viet Vietnam. Our last as a host Vietnam. city. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing. Tonight, However, Mary. we do have rugby on Saturday. Yes, we do. We've got a sold out All Blacks game. We, we look have to Bledisloe this. Cup match, and we have a special lookout in the ODT tomorrow for a special publication. Um, around that game, so it's a pull-out, lift-out mm -hmm. uh, on the Bledisloe Cup, so it's something special. Um, and what else have we got? Well, lots of things. The student protest at the University Day uh, today, and mm -hmm. uh, police attended that uh, um, that event. Um, and uh, we have an Invercargill man who admitted uh, killing his child, and he's been jailed for three years and three months. Gosh, all right. Well, thank you for sharing this evening, Barry. Phone on silent next time, and thank, thank you for coming you. over. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> time now for a look at your weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, it'll be a very cold wintry day tomorrow with hail and sleet showers about the coasts and gale force winds in exposed places too, but the weather looks better the further inland you go. Heading to the top of the South Island, gusty southwesterlies with showers right through here tomorrow with highs of 11 in Nelson and Greymouth, and Christchurch is wet and windy with 8 degrees. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, relatively fine through here with southwesterly winds with highs of 8 in Ashburton and Timaru, while Iwamaru will be showery with strong winds and a top temperature of just 7 degrees. Heading westwards to the central lakes, the gusty cold winds continue as we come over here with cool highs of 5 in Queenstown, 6 for Wanaka and 7 degrees in Alexandra. Heading further south, more southwesterlies down through here and it will be wet at times too with showers and 7 degrees apiece for Gore, Balclutha and the Catlins. Across to Invercargill, well down to 4 degrees tonight with hail and sleet that will continue into tomorrow. Also expect gale for southwesterlies with just 5 degrees as the day's high. Thursday, that's a showery one with a few winds easing back slowly with a warmer 10 degree high. And finally heading to Dunedin. Showers and southwesterly gales tonight with a low of 4. Tomorrow brings lots of cloud, rain, hail, sleet and strong to gale force southwest winds with a high of 7 degrees. Thursday slightly better with 10 degrees after morning showers leaving a cloudy, breezy day. 
And that's the news this Tuesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. And we're also on Facebook. Just search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite stories from around the regions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite o popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air. The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need, from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. Drive away your way with three incredible offers on the Honda CRV Adventure Ready Range. Choose from 2.9% finance with zero deposit, third 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 finance, or lease a new CRV from just $136 per week. These offers are only available for a limited time, so be in quick. From Honda. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Living Well Disability Resource Centre, a not-for-profit charitable organisation and your one-stop shop for information and resources to help you retain independence. We offer a wide range of assistive products from jar openers to mobility scooters and provide assessments for Total Mobility, the half-price taxi scheme. Come and see the friendly team. You'll find us on the corner of George and Bath Streets, ground floor of Burns House. UPVC Windows and Doors is a local Dunedin company who manufacture, install and service everything they make. Sign up this month for a free glass upgrade. Call UPVC Windows and Doors today. Passion. Drama. Competition. Rivalry. Marketing. Numbers. Atmosphere. Power. Fight. Attack. Intuition. Love. Hate. Money. Cash. Millionaires. Fans. 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 And fans. <laughs> oh boy.